Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone, regular rollers time, let's roll. We'll start with one sent by Matt, who wrote, I took a gamble on an eBay listing, and although it wasn't a home run, I think it makes for an interesting conversation piece. I personally believe there's value in graded Hall of Fame rookies of the 1970s, and they're not getting the love they deserve. These cards are 40 uh, to 55 years old, and you can regularly find copies of collector-grade PSA 7 rookies of all-time greats at a very reasonable price. I came across the following uh, Dave Winfield card. I've been watching sales of the card enough to know that sales of the Topps version in a PSA 7 uh, regularly go for about $100. What stuck out to me here was in the photo of the listing with the flip of the PSA showing not a 1974 Topps, but a 1974 OPG. OPGs are much rarer than the Topps. The PSA pop report lists just 20 OPG 7s and uh, of this card with only 22 higher. There is a lot going on with the listing, but I figured at $100 buy it now, I'd take a shot. At worst, I'd own a high-grade Winfield rookie at current market value, and at best, I'd own a much rarer, more valuable OPG version. When I got the card, I received exactly what was purchased in the listing. It's a 1974 Topps Dave Winfield rookie at graded at PSA 7. It is, in fact, the Topps version with a green back, not a yellow. Uh, the PSA label that is clearly an error, labeling it as an OPG. I'm not upset about the purchase. I'm fine with owning the 1974 Topps PSA 7 for my PC. I think the fact that the label is wrong makes for an interesting conversation piece, and it's an oddball item that I can pass on to my son someday. Next one was sent up by JD, who wrote, I just wanted to write about an absolute beauty of a card I feel like I found. I'm a huge auto racing collector, and I absolutely cherish anything related to form, uh, former F1 champions. I was amazed to see that Mario Andretti autograph cards uh, tend to sell for only around 25 bucks. I really thought his autograph would sell for more. Mario Andretti was an F1 champion and a winner of the Indy 500 and the Daytona 500. To this day, he's the only driver to ever complete that accomplishment. He's also just the second American driver to ever win the F1 championship. I felt like this card was a really incredible card for my collection. Next one is not exactly a regular rollers, but it does touch on something I've mentioned a few times on the channel here. This was sent by Brian who wrote, A few times previously you have touched on the state of the modern relic cards, and I think this recent sale epitomizes some of the issues. Notice this shoe piece is not uh, game-worn, athlete-worn, nor event-worn. So in essence, this could be a piece of a random shoe off the shelf, simply of the brand typically worn by Michael Jordan. Of course, the value is especially in the Michael Jordan autograph, but I find it amazing to see this big of an unknown on a $4,000 card. I'm uh, no shoe expert at all, but I also find it hard to believe that the seller can know that this relic is specifically from Air 12s, just based on appearance. Yeah, I totally agree, and I've gotten used to this now that it's just part of the hobby for better or for worse, but it does, still does surprise me that on high-end stuff you see this. The piece of the shoe is from the shoe brand typically worn by Michael Jordan. I mean, that has nothing to do with anything, and this shoe piece is not game-worn, athlete-worn, or event-worn. I mean, this the, the patches here have nothing to do with Michael Jordan. You could say the same thing about any human being. You could say the same thing about me. The piece of the shoe here is from the shoe brand typically worn by Chris Sewell. That works just as well. Uh, you know, for me personally, if I'm spending big bucks on a card like this, I would want uh, relics that had some some relevance. This was sent by David, who I've actually done a number of deals with at this point. He wrote, I was looking for a Steph Curry Topps Gold Rookie out of 2009 on eBay, and this listing popped up. It's the entire set minus the Curry. I was dumbfounded by the price. The breakup value, I imagine, is at least double. The James Harden was around $200. Last I looked, I believe this was an amazing buy. Yeah, at first glance, I, I think you got a total steal here, assuming that all the cards are you know near mint condition or so. James Harden rookie, DeMar DeRozan rookie, you got LeBron and Kobe. I mean, those four cards, I'm sure, get you well over the, the asking price here, and then you got a ton of other goodies to play with. So yeah, I think you did really well here. This was sent by Scott, who wrote, been on the hunt for a decent raw copy of your boy's 82 tops traded rookie. Just think it's a, such an iconic card down to the photo, pose, card design, everything. Anyway, stumbled onto, onto a couple of what appeared to be separate auctions from the same seller. I guess they are. However, they used an identical picture for each listing, both the front and the back. You can tell if you look closely at something like the debris in the penny sleeve above the card. They're clearly using the same scan for both listings. The listing titles are completely different. They aren't doing the quantity available thing, and they aren't mentioning that the image is just a representative photo. So what's going on here? How do you know which actual card you're getting if you win the auction? Also attaching uh, in their description, which states you get the picture in the scan. Thoughts on this? Is this some sort of strategy? Just a bit of seller laziness? Uh, interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, what's going on here. Uh, PC Sports Cards is a, is a huge seller. I, I don't know a lot about them, but they're a major seller with a strong reputation. I, I would imagine uh, this was just a mistake on their part where they, they had two copies of the card and ended up using the uh, the same photo for both. But I don't know that. That would sort of be my uh, my best guess. 
This was sent by Lou, who wrote, I enjoy hunting down vintage lots that I can break up and resell at a profit, hopefully. I found this 1963 Topps 45 card lot for sale, and it seemed like a good target. The lot is a decent low to mid-grade condition, and there are a few Hall of Famers, Warren Spahn, a couple of League Leader cards with Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale, and a Whitey Ford World Series game card. Figured the commons could be bundled up and the Hall of Famers could be sold individually. So I went into Gixon and put in my max bid and won it for about $40 all in after taxes and shipping. When I looked closely at the lot, I noticed the Whitey Ford card is actually autographed. It's hard to see in the photos and it was not pointed out in the listing, but it certainly looks like the true uh, Whitey Ford signature. What a cool surprise. This card is not a uh, great shape, but really fun uh, to unexpectedly snag the auto of a Hall of Fame player. Uh, yeah, very cool. This is exactly the type of lot I used to love to buy, and uh, I think you did you did you know fine here. I wouldn't say you hit a home run, but uh, this is a this is a good price if you if you break this up properly, you can uh, make a little bit of money. And yeah, the Whitey Ford being autographed that's a nice uh, nice surprise for sure. This was sent by Cordell, who wrote a couple weeks ago. I stumbled upon this auction for what was listed as a 1980 Top 60 Money Winners PGA Tour trading cards. I knew that, in fact, this was a 1981 Donruss golf set, which holds the distinction of being the first modern golf card set released. Because of that, it includes the rookie cards of golf greats Jack Nicholas, Tom Watson, Lee Trevino, and Tom Kite. The 60-card checklist features the top 60 money winners of the 1980 season, plus six uh, statistical leaders cards. I knew the Nicholas probably wasn't worth getting graded because the centering was so bad, but uh, the listing claimed to be the complete set, so I put in a bit of $5 and ended up winning it for $1.25, which was $7.50 all in after taxes and shipping. I received it about a week later and was in fact it was in fact the complete 66 card set and all the cards were in near mint condition. A couple days later I sold the complete set on eBay for a best offer of $35. At the end of the day it's a $20 profit on a purchase of a listing that got lost in the shuffle uh, due to a poor listing title. This was sent by Quentin who wrote, I love finding good deals on eBay uh, when the listing has a short vague title. But this one certainly took the cake for me. I'm a Nikola Jokic collector, and I couldn't believe it when I came across this gold rookie from Panini Noir out of 10. Watched it all week and had to wake up early to secure the auction win. Obviously, with him winning his first championship and finally being stamped an all-time great, makes the card uh, that much more special. I don't think I overpaid as there was one numbered to 99 that just did $300 in June, but would like your opinion on that too. Uh, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about this card or this set, but at first glance, certainly appears to be a great price. And uh, like you said, the listing is missing a lot of important things. Nikola Jokic rookie card, that's not going to do it. Got to have Panini Noir in there. Got to have the year, 2015. Should really have out of 10 as well. Uh, if, if a 1 out of 99 did $300 and 1 out of 10 going for basically double that is probably a steal. And like I said, without re having really researched it, I would have guessed this card would have gone for a lot more than uh, $600. Next one was sent by Peter, and it's another vintage lot looking for a breakup value. He wrote, the 64 rows and maze on this first page caught my eye. I need the rows, and I know I can easily sell the maze. There's also a 66 Sutton rookie that I need and a Jim Palmer rookie. I hesitated because the initial ask was $150, and the cards were very low grade, and the listing did not include photos of the back, but I decided to go for it and won it for $177 all in. I received the package three days later. The first thing I noticed when I opened the box was that the 64s had black backs, I've learned enough over the years to know that these are much the much rarer Venezuelan version of the set. I couldn't believe it. The listing said nothing about this. I know the 1966 Venezuelans are much harder to identify because of their uh, primary distinguishing feature is the back color is darker orangish pink instead of a light pink, but I'm pretty sure the 66s are the Venezuelas as well. There are about 10 cards in the lot that I think would go for $100 or more each uh, even ungraded, and I think the commons could go for $5 each even in poor condition. Uh, this is one of the truly great finds I've ever had. It's not going to get any better than this. I would say it's a mic drop situation, but who am I kidding? I'm never going to stop trying to top it. One question from the photo I included, do you think the 66s look like Venezuelans? Wow, congrats on that. That is a, a total treasure find. And to answer your question, I, I really can't tell from the pictures that the 66s are Venezuelans. But I'd say if the 64s are, there's at least a decent chance that the 66s are as well. This was sent in by Neil from Texas who wrote, pumped up about my recent eBay purchase and wanted to share for regular rollers. Hakeem Olajuwon is my PC and favorite player growing up and to score an SGC 8.5 rookie sticker for a decent price was a win. I'm sending this to you because I recently sent uh, to PSA two raw copies Olajuwon sticker rookies and to me that they were super clean. One got a PSA 6 and the other wouldn't grade because of mini size. These older cards are hard to find in decent shape so instead of me chasing raw copies, sometimes scoring what I want initially Saves money and frustration. Just my two cents, but I've heard you say it before and wanted to to share. Uh, very cool here to hear that story. And yeah, the card looks really, really nice there. And the SGC holder, great, uh, great PC card. Congrats on that. 
This one's sent by Danielle, who wrote, uh, I wanted to see if you'd encountered this before, but I came across someone selling a 1993 Studio Kirby Pucket that's quote-unquote autographed, I even though it isn't. It, the autograph is just part of the card design. What's concerning to me, though, is eBay authenticated it as real. I was already taken that their authentication with a grain of salt, but, uh, I mean, it's obvious it's just part of the design. Have you seen this before? Or before? Do you know anyone at eBay to tell this about? So the, the eBay authenticity program actually doesn't, authenticate cards uh, while they're listed. It only does after the purchase has been made. So the authentication guarantee here means that once the card is purchased, it will be sent there and then confirmed or not. And it, it will, it, this in this case, it will obviously get rejected. And so the sale will not go through. And, uh, but you know, this is one of the flaws of the eBay authentic authentication program, at least compared to like the vault systems, which are much superior. Somebody can still list whatever they want. And then there's this whole process and time can time tied up and money tied up for a while. As, uh, as it goes through it and, and the card will ultimately get rejected. With the vaults, for example, you know, the vault companies, for example, this card would not even be allowed to be listed. So uh, just another example where the, the, the vaults have a superior system to, to eBay, in my opinion. And we'll finish on a vintage bargain. This was ended by Grant who wrote, you have mentioned this card before on your channel. And I just can't believe how undervalued it is. 1962 tops AL home run leaders featuring the magical 61 home runs of Roger Maris. Mickey Mantle as well, and, and Harmon Killebrew. I purchased this card for a total of $12. I think the historical significance of the content of this card would be very hard to match for, for any card. Yeah, I mean, totally agree. I've talked about this card before. 1962 tops home run leaders. You got the famous Roger Maris 61 home run season highlighted there. Mickey Mantle also at 54 home runs. He was actually in contention to break the record for a while as well. Harmon Killebrew, a Hall of Famer uh, included. I think part of it is some people don't like the floating heads concept on the card. That never really bothered me. But yeah, in terms of like historical baseball relevance, this is a, an incredibly, you know, I would say great value, collector value for, for 10, 12 bucks here. But that's it for this week's Regular Rollers. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, no Regular Rollers next Thursday. Regular Rollers is now going to be every other Thursday as... I have to cut back a little bit on my channel. Just uh, got too much going on to be putting out four videos a week. So we'll make regular rollers in every other week type of thing. But uh, until next time, have a, have a great day. Thanks, everyone.